133 at the moment. Everything else is staying relatively cool. Let's unbox this battery charger. Got some documentation here. Got some really heavy duty battery clamps. Nice big uh, Anderson connector there in the end. We got this uh, pigtail here. Anderson to ring terminals. AC charging wire. Check this guy out. It's not uh, incredibly heavy or anything, but uh, really nice cable. There's the other Anderson connector right there. On this end, you have your indicator light. When it's powered on, the green light will just be on. When it's below 90%, the red light will be flashing. When it's above 90%, the green light will start to flash. And when it's fully charged, the green light will just be steady on again. Okay, we have a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery here that's uh, completely dead. And uh, we've got this 50 amp uh, charger. Let's test it out uh, with this. The nice thing about this battery is it's got uh, a Bluetooth app. Uh, so once we get this going, we'll be able to log into that and see what uh, what kind of power this is pushing. I want to try out these heavy duty alligator clamps. All right, so let's do the uh, positive here and the negative. There's an on off switch on this end, so we'll flip that. We've got the flashing red light and the fan just turned on. Wow. It's a very powerful fan. Let's pull up the app on this battery and see what kind of current uh, we're getting in. All right, here is the app for that battery. And uh, right here, you can see that uh, we are pushing in 47.7 amps, total of 637 watts. Uh, we're low on charge, but the current battery voltage, 13.3. Temperatures are looking pretty good all across the board there. We've got four different temperature sensors uh, in the 20 degrees Celsius range. So let's let this run and we'll see how that uh, changes. Yeah, dumping in some good power here. Now, it's only been a few minutes here, and uh, I was just going through and feeling, and right here where this clamp is clamped on is getting really, really hot. So I don't think we have a very good connection. This negative side is doing well, uh, but this positive side is, is getting quite, quite hot. The cable's a little bit warm to the touch as well. Anyway, I want to uh, change these to uh, the ring terminal uh, connections, so we're going to do that quick. All right, we've uh, got to the ring terminals here. Let's... Uh, Turn it back on and uh, let's see how the heat is now. It's flashing red, so we're charging again. Uh, these ring terminals uh, are doing much, much better. Uh, I can hardly feel anything warm. Uh, however, one thing that uh, you do have to be careful of is this thing. Even though it's got a crazy amount of airflow going through it to keep it cool, this bottom side, actually it's almost too hot to touch. This bottom side, especially right along here, is really, really hot. So I'm gonna put it up here on its edge, but I wouldn't feel comfortable screwing this uh, to, against anything that uh, wasn't like concrete or, or something, because there is a lot of heat building up on the back of this. Mostly seems to be contained to this side. Now this is the side that the air is being drawn through, so that's hopefully helping, but uh, it is almost too hot for me to touch right back here and on this side right here. So be aware of that. There is a lot of heat with this charger. 760-ish watts, 758, 57, 59. Let's just, go, let's just call it 758 watts, okay? And uh, here we're 641, 642, basically. So we just do some simple math. 758 minus 642. That means that this charger is consuming over 100 watts by itself. And so wasted energy uh, goes to heat, and so that might be why it's running so hot. And I guess you can take my word for it, but uh, why don't we use this uh, thermal imaging camera here? So you can see up in the top left of that uh, imaging camera, you can see uh, the temperatures. So if we point uh, the center temperature, which is that top one, at uh, the battery here, you can see that you know it's just in the the low to mid 80 range. So not hardly warm at all. But then we come over here to this 130 degrees there on the top side. On the end there, we're in the high 90s. Look on the back side here. Yeah, it's rising 135. So the heat there is no joke. Uh, the cable itself is staying uh, fairly cool. Looks like we're in the high 90s right there. 97. So it's warm. Definitely not 130 whatever degrees like the charger is. All right, it's been a few more minutes here. And uh, the charger seems to have kind of just topped out in the mid 130 degree range. 133 at the moment. Everything else is staying relatively cool. Uh, just up in the high 90s, low 100s in terms of the uh, the cabling. So yes, I would highly, highly recommend be sure and have this in a very well ventilated place. Non-combustible thing. I raised it up off the carpet on this cord, but that's because I'm sitting right here uh, watching it. I would not leave that unattended here. With that kind of heat, uh, you're just asking for trouble. But it does appear that it gets to a certain temperature and then is pretty much uh, saturated at that point and doesn't get any hotter. 
so long as it has proper and good ventilation. Do you want to do a quick update here? We're at 14.25 volts on uh, this battery, so getting close to full, and the charger does indeed do what it says it's supposed to do and start blinking green as it's nearing completion of the charge cycle. So what else needs to be said about this? It's a battery charger and it charges batteries exceptionally well. Just keep it in a cool spot and away from combustible materials and you'll be golden. I'll leave a link uh, for it down in the description in case you want to check it out. If real world testing like this is a uh, value to you, please drop a comment uh, down below and uh, let me know why you appreciate it. Let me know any questions you may have about this. And uh, also please uh, consider giving us a like and subscribing. Those are 100% free for you to do, but really benefit the channel. Sure appreciate all you guys. Take care.